and welcome to our program. I'm Captain Mark Noble, and I got another guide with me here today, a good friend of mine, Captain Gary Altman. We fish out of Golden Isles Marina right here on St. Simons Island, and we're going to do a little bit of trout fishing and red drum fishing. That's absolutely true. Well, Gary and I have been running quite a few charters here lately, and the fishing's been good. However, today we got a pretty strong north wind. I would say. And Gary, pretty much when we see these kind of conditions, you know, a lot of people we know really won't go out and fish. And setting up on these places is awful important on a day like today. Absolutely. There's nothing any, any worse than trying to throw into the wind, Mark. As that's the reason why we right now we're trying to fish with the wind at our back. And we're casting, even though the tide's coming back at us, we can maintain control of our line. And I'd rather be able to throw a greater distance and then uh, have it the wind push it back on you like this that's right and 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 y'all basically with with this television show what we're trying to do is not only show you some good fishing but hopefully we're going to be able to teach you something right here on this show that you can take out and use for yourself every place we pick today is going to have the wind in mind and the tide in mind as well we're going to be looking for that clean water so stick around i think you're going to enjoy today's show right here on captain mark noble's outdoor journal yeah, this shelf comes out. Let me come a little bit more. Right about there, Gary. See if that'll hold right there, because we're going to keep that shelf up. Oh, we got you. Yeah, You know, up in here, up in the creek, up here at uh, Rattlesnake, uh, that's that's gonna be that'll be good fishing because it'll look, those fish will be on that shell reef that runs uh, perpendicular to right here, kind of runs at the angle. Uh, I'll be catching some real nice fish in here too. Okay. One thing you always want to keep in mind: you heard me earlier say, you know, we're looking for the clean water, and as the tide runs out especially on a day when it's windy, you're going to find that some areas are going to have cleaner water than others. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move around until we find clean water. And in this case, on an outgoing flow, sometimes if the creek that you're fishing around is carrying a clean water discharge, then fish on the down current side of that creek. And sometimes you'll find that the water will roll a little bit cleaner in there, and that'll make a big difference. So what we're going to do is come off this point. We'll catch some redfish right here, and I think we'll continue to catch redfish here, but we sure like to find some speckled trout. So we're going to look for a little cleaner water and see if we can find some trout right here on the other side of this creek mouth. Remember, look for that clean water and you'll catch more trout. Gary and I have been fishing down here, right here out of St. Simons Island for many years together. And you'll find out that each guide fishes a spot maybe just a little bit different than one another. But basically, when you fish, you want to look at your areas, figure out how to set up on it well before you get to where you want to fish. Because remember, if you go in there across the place you're going to fish, running your motor, there's a good chance you could spook off your fish. So plan your approach, ease into where you want to go, get the wind about as good as you can hope to get it for that in particular spot, and then make them long cast in there on these flats. And by keeping your motor out of it, it'll probably help you catch a lot more fish. Something, something, something. He's a something, something, too. Oh, speckled trout. Yeah, just a little something, something. Well, Gary? You mean that, Gary? Ah, I will. Uh, might get the net on this. All right. He's shaking pretty hard. Isn't He's shaking his head. Come on, fish. Redfish, Gary, yeah. There you go, Gary. There you go. Gary, that's probably what, about a 16 inch redfish? Uh, I would say pretty close to it. We'll uh, see what we got here as far as a measurement. Mark you pretty good. 16 and a quarter? 16 and a quarter. All right. Yeah. 
we gonna be keeping it in fellas or we gonna put these beauties back? Well, I'll tell you what we can do, Gary. Why don't we keep our trout today? All right. And let's let a redfish go. Nah, that sounds like a good idea to me. Let me come right over here and we'll put this one back. Mark, one thing I always like to do when I reel in, I like to check my shrimp and make sure he's still alive. What I check for is the bubbles in his head. If he's got mm -hmm. bubbles working back into it, his head, this one right here, is, she's, uh, she's, she's croaked. There you oh, go. Golly, Gary. Did I, did I make you miss him? Well, I'm not going to blame you. I mean, I had the rod in my hand, so that was angler. Yeah. But that, that fish, did you, did, he got dragged off the reel from the right out. Well, he about snatched out of my hand, Gary. Well... If you'd have set the hook, you'd have torn my nose. Well, <laughs> there you go, Gary. Ooh, good gracious, like I had gosh. one of those fish on there uh, a while ago. I pulled him quite a ways, and uh, and I lost him. I want you to look, Mark. You think he was laying on the mud? Look at the bottom. He's been laying there all morning long, waiting on Captain Gary Altman to show up. That's right, and here he is. <laughs> Fellas, that, this is a real good-sized flounder right here to keep and eat. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, we all take for granted, everybody knows uh, everything there is to know about a flounder, but, you know, the white side of that flounder is the side that lays on the bottom, and the top side of it is camouflage, so that when the fish lays on the bottom, that he can actually just turn up and grab the bait as it comes over. His eyes are on the both sides of his head, and his mouth is full of teeth. Gary, I think I can do something with that thing right there. I believe I can, too. Gary, you noticed something the other day. I was running down the beach. Well, I went down and fished towards Cumberland, and I came back down the front side. I started seeing a bunch of triple tails. Yeah, they're out there on the beach right now. Bart, something just bobbed. Oh, he went out oh, there. He scared well, it to death. Know, you know, I've been a professional guide so long, Mark. I watched two or three corks at one time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why them eyes kind of float around a little bit there, Gary? I'll tell you right now. Well, see, I got that, that cork of mine trained, so when a fish looks at it, that cork will kind of go down a little bit and let me know to get ready. Get ready. Just kind of squat. <laughs> I mean, that cork right there is a highly trained piece of fishing equipment. There you go. That's where I want to be. There he is right there, Gary, if I can. Oh, Gary, what in the world? Did you see that? Oh, I saw that. That fish, he is doing his thing. Oh, I think you've got one of them uh, bass there, Mark. Well, I know one thing, Gary. He had a little attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, you was right, Gary, right there by that shell bar. Uh, there was a fish laying in there. And this fish right here has got a little meat on him, Gary. You want a little net? I might have to have a little net. 20-inch trout in here the other day. Well, you know, Gary, I've been fishing right down the bank from here, and I've been finding the uh, the oh, nice trout. Yeah. There you go. I've been finding these these size trout right here has been keyed up on the glass minnows. And, uh, you know, this time of the year, anytime when you're working into the month of May and even mid-April, uh, something else to look for is, is a lot of birds out here working around these shell points and off these uh, off these mud bars, and you'll find that the uh, the trout will key up on glass minnows. So many times, what I'll do is I'll I'll fish these popping corks back off from these flats, throw in where we see the birds diving, looking for the glass minnows, and if you approach it properly, then a lot of times you can really get on a real good bite from good sized fish. Now these fish are in a pre spawn condition. They're starting to row up right now, so this time of the year, one can expect sometimes to catch large, large number of trout and some big trout. And this right here is a real nice fish. It's probably going to be around 19 inches long. So I'll ease him off here. I think we're going to keep us a few to eat today. You know that we talked earlier, we're going to let our redfish go and we're going to keep our trout because I really and honestly can't say that I see anything wrong with that right there. Gary, what are you doing? Oh, I think I done got another one. Well, Bites on, Gary. Let me get this fish out of my hands, and let's see if we can't go ahead and stack a few in the in the cooler. He sure got bigger. 
closer I got to the, to the podium, Mark. Is he bigger than a bean, Gary? I think he's bigger than a bean. You might want to throw it in on All right. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do just that, Gary. Holy oh, smokes, right look at there. Huh? Yes, sir. Well, Gary, I think that's all right. Matter of fact, I liked it so much, I think y'all do it again. <laughs> yeah, Lord. Gary, Gary. Uh-huh. Golly. You got it? I can't catch up to him. Well, look here. The old smoke pole. Man. Woo! Me down. Good <laughs> Lord, Gary, look at it. He's snatching some line off this reel. I'm telling you, I told you there was some goat ropers in here. Great time, son. Now, this is the way fishing ought to be. I mean, three casts. We just pulled in here, and I'll be honest with you, I, I think we've had a bite on every cast. But this is what we expect to see down here this time of the year. He has definitely got some weight to him. That might be one of those big tractor trout. Well, we're going to find out here shortly. Stay right there. Look at there, Mark. Now, Looky there. Now, did I tell you? Did I Gary? Tell you not? That right there is oh, what yeah. we come for. <laughs> that is what we come for, Gary Altman. Mm -hmm. Look at here, y'all. Now, you don't think we're not talking about nice trout? Now, that right there, it doesn't really matter where you go to fish. This is a good Georgia trout. This time of the year, right here before the fish spawn out, remember, get on down here and get you some of these fish. Gary Altman and I have been charter fishing here for many, many years and have probably been doing it longer than most people have. But these kind of fish right here, it's just a shame not to get down here and get you some of these. That's a good trout right there. Gary, how much do you reckon this fish weighs? Uh, probably close to two and a half. I'm like, I'd say close to three, Mark. Yeah, I think he's probably going to be three pounds or probably just a little bit better than three pounds. I'll put the measurement on him. Put the measurement on We'll find out. And we'll find out just what we got here. Fish right there. Going crazy. That that fish right there is probably about 22 and a half inches long. Just a good, good trout. About the triple tail. Yeah, the uh, the triple tail right there on the beach, and that's you know that's something we look forward to doing every year. And that's uh, getting out here on the front side, and we're going to bring you a show on that here pretty soon. And that sight fishing these triple tails, man, what a wonderful fish to catch. There's not a lot of fish you can truly sight fish in the state of Georgia, but the triple tail is definitely one of them. And it's something we run quite a few charters on. But, you know, if you get the opportunity and you got a boat, probably 17 foot or maybe a little bit better, then you can actually come down here and put in at one of these local boat ramps and get out there and just look for these fish surface feeding. You know, take one of these top corks that we're fishing today, put a short leader on it, live shrimp, and look for these fish women, and then just make a good bait, a uh, good cast, pull the bait right in front of that triple tail, and man, it ain't nothing. It's nothing but a thing then, because they will eat a live shrimp about every time you put it in front of them. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, come on, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. See that other red fish? <laughs> Did you see that? That was another red fish right there. No, that wasn't my fish. No, it wasn't your fish. I was looking down there and I saw that red fish sitting down there by the boat. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been offshore and actually stuck the wrong cobia? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you come within a foot and a half of catching the wrong redfish with the well i mean i was looking at the redfish sitting there by the boat and uh well there you have it gary i mean the, the redfish are definitely stacked up in here right now oh and that right there proves it gary absolutely look at that people i had some fine redfish quality there Man, my daddy always said if you snooze you lose and i'm gonna if, if your court goes down i'm gonna hunt the whole way it went down Boy, those, those trout will hang right in there. And that is spot. documented fish thievery. <laughs> Gary, you're going to need net, aren't you? Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's a keeper. He's sure hit hard. Oh, yeah. Yep, that was the one I just had on there. Oh, I can yeah. tell by the way he looks, Gary. Oh, yeah. Well, you can see a little place in the side of his face here where it's. All right, keep it up. Tore a, tore a little bit. I about tore his face off. I see. Look at the hole inside of that picture.
That's the reason why when you set the hook on a speckled trout, when you come back with your rod, you never go back down until you maintain control of your fish. Because if you, if you, if you come back and set that hook and go back down, that hook will fall right out, sure as the world. That's the biggest mistake most people do when they're fishing for speckled trout. Now, redfish, that's a completely different kind of fish. Uh, nine times out of ten, you can't lose a redfish. You know? Mark. Yeah, the redfish, you know, they got that mouth. Once you stick them, you're pretty safe. But, you know, a lot of times, Gary, uh, the people I got down here are, are prone to... Good God. That is a nice fish, Gary. He's He came up right there and bowled on top of the water with that. I hear you. But if you notice, Gary, you know, I don't set the hook that hard. You know, everybody's got their own personal ways of doing it. But if you snatch real hard, we're fishing this non-stretched line you will actually part their lips and uh and actually the hook will snatch out of their mouth and the bigger hole you wall are in there the first time that you give a little bit of slack the hook will fall like area was talking about so you know play these fish gently if you're going to fish this non-stretch floating line which is what i highly recommend doing if you're going to fish these popping corks you'll find that uh that you're fishing your catch will go up and uh you won't have to really horse to fish as much but maintain a good you know good contact to your fish and gary that one right there he just came right on up there that's a oh, red drum that's your red fish oh, yeah. all right gary let's try and shake him out of that net Now that fish right there, uh, you know, of course, if you'd like to eat redfish, this would be a great size to eat. And you can see he came in there and hit it and swallowed the bait. So what I'm going to do to let this fish go, the best thing to do is just clip your line off and just let the fish go like that. And they stand a lot better chance than if you try to go down in the throat and, and pull the hook out itself. But here, you know, here's a nice redfish, probably about a 16, maybe a 16 and a quarter inch fish right up here on the shell bar. Gary, you got a fish on? Oh, yeah, I'm sneaking in. <laughs> well, look, it's one cast after another. Fishing's good. I'm going to quit talking, and I'm going to get back to fishing because I'm ready to get some more of this. Everyone, what I want to do is just take a moment and show you what we've been fishing with today. Now, you know, we talked about top water baits. We talked about artificial baits. But today it's been very windy, and the wind's dying out a little bit right now because we're on the, the bottom end of the tide. But something you'll see me fishing with a lot is this cork right here. It's called the Thunder Chicken. This is the only cork on the market. There's a patent pending on this process right here because this cork is made to throw like a dart. You can see that this sinker right here is molded onto the shaft, which allows us to make long casts. Now, there are other corks similar in nature to this cork right here, but none of them really performs the way this cork does. And I know there's a lot of diehard people out there, and if, if you like what you're fishing with, by all means, stick with it. But if, if you want to really get an additional ledge on it, then switch to this cork right here. You'll see, as well as uh, Gary and myself have seen, that this right here has really, really helped our catch out considerably. It'll give you a little bit longer cast. You'll get a little bit of a pop out of this weight every time you pop the cork. It acts like a paddle and puts out a swirl like a small bait fish. And you also get the clicking noise that comes along with these beads being clicking on the top and the brass beads here on the bottom. So this is a great addition to uh, to your tackle box. I would not go fishing without a Thunder Chicken cork. And really the best way to get a hold of these corks is just call me. Uh, you can call me, Captain Mark Noble, at area code 912-634-1219. We send these corks all over the country and even up to Canada. There's many different uh, ways to use this cork in, cork in fresh and salt water. And really, the, the possibilities are endless. But really, it's more important, y'all, to make a long, accurate cast. And like today, the wind was up a little bit. And this cork allowed us to fish anyways. Because every day we go, the wind's not going to, it's just not going to be a perfect day. And so this will allow you to fish a little on days that you really couldn't. This cork is also weighted up so it floats properly. So the fish don't really have to uh, exert a lot of effort to take the cork under. And especially for trout in sheephead and even red drum that's awful important to catching that one more fish each, uh, one more fish each day i'm fishing with really just 12 pound fluorocarbon leader underneath this cork 
And I got about two foot of 12 pound fluorocarbon leader tied right here to the sinker, all the way down here to what I'm fishing with today is a number four kale style hook. Now this number four hook right here, really, it meets the size bait needs that we have today. I don't want to fish a hook that's too big, nor really do I want to fish a, a hook that's too small for the bait. I always determine what size hook I'm going to fish based off what kind of bait that I'm fishing on that in, in particular day. I carry number sixes, I carry number fours, I carry number twos, and number one size hooks. And of course, sometimes when we're fishing these real big white shrimp, we'll go all the way up to a one or two alt size hook. So remember, use a thunder chicken cork, fluorocarbon leader, and a kale style hook for live bait fishing. These things right here will uh, add fish to your cooler at the end of the day. And uh, I believe you'll find out just as we have that a kale hook is perhaps the live best live bait fish or the a kale hook is the best style of hook to use when you're fishing live bait. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's show. And from Captain Gary Altman, Mark Noble, we really appreciate y'all watching the show today. Gary? I had a wonderful time, Mark. Uh, I think we caught a, a nice mess of fish today, even on a kind of a blistery northeaster we had going on and uh, still there's plenty of fish around us right now but we're going to have to wrap this show up, show up because of the injury to my wrist today. <laughs> <laughs> so. Look here everybody, you know Gary's a great friend of mine and we're both participants in Golden Isles Charter Fishing Association in all honesty if you want to come down here and go trout fishing you know call Gary Altman or, or ask for me Captain Mark Noll because I really just don't think you're going to do any better than Gary when it comes to trout and red drum fishing down here and and you know Gary we spent our whole lives down here learning these waters and and the reason why I believe we're probably some of the best people you're going to run into down here is because we want it to be that way. I take it serious Mark. Yeah. I yeah. really do. I've always taken my fishing serious. And, and that and that's all right Gary because yeah. we want to catch fish regardless of the situation whether it's the winds up a little bit like today or we got paying customers down here on the boat we know that money means a lot to you and we want to give you the best possible fishing trip that we can now we won't knock them out every day but most of the time we're going to do we're going to, i feel like we'll do pretty good gary oh absolutely you know i mean we've had bad you've had bad days every once in a while everybody does but the thing about it is is uh you're going to catch more fish and have a better time fishing out of the golden isles fishing association than you I think with anybody else I you know we 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 put a good uh we put a good trip on I really do and, and I agree you know we, we fish people from all over the United States and the in the coast of Georgia is coming on strong as being a truly a world-class fishing destination and you can come down here and call and ask for Captain Gary Altman or me Captain Mark Noble and uh and come down here and get that quality fishing trip and there's plenty here to do for the whole family and like I said once again I hope you enjoyed today's show and I'm Captain Mark Noble, and this is Captain Gary Altman. Captain Mark Noble's Outdoor Journal. We hope you will tune in next week to uh, another exciting episode of Catching Some Fish down here on the Georgia Coast.